well as a lady. Um, husband's been suffering from cancer, and a friend of mine has prayed, and uh, much of the cancer is gone because of um, the prayer. Well, because of God answering the prayer, of course. But there's some left. But what's the real need of this lady for her husband? Well, actually her real need, as she sees it, is that her husband is completely free of the cancer. But really, her true need is that she come to know in her heart that whatever happens, either way, even if he were to die of the cancer, it makes no difference to her. Because of God, because of her Heavenly Father, because whatever it is best. After all, it might be best for a husband to go to heaven and best for her to be able to trust and realize in such situation that with or without him she has what really matters her dad, her heavenly father always with her come rain or shine, you see it doesn't matter you see, when you're in love, you can be sitting at a cold bus stop with your love, with your beloved, and you're in paradise just to be with her. <laughs> Rain or shine, you see. If it's a beautiful sunny day, well, that's lovely. If it isn't, it's still just heaven being with her. Enter into that with your God, your dad, your best friend. That given he is with you, the rest is just irrelevant. You're just an observer. Because of this overwhelming inner peace of his presence in you, your consuming awareness of his good company. Closer than close, you are held in his embrace and you look out of the world. It's just a film. It's just a video. What matters is his ever-present company with you. That's the ideal, you see, and you continue to experience being knocked about in life by whatever occurrence happens until you enter into that realization, that maturity of fully appreciating the presence of God, your dad, with you, always and forever, forever in the past, present and future, our God. Love you, Heavenly Father. May that be our reality, that you are our everything, you not a partner, not uh, anything but you. That we love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. And our neighbor, the one that rescues us, like our partner perhaps, our wife, our husband, we love them as ourselves. 
we want them to have this great realization more than being healed of their cancer more than anything we want them to have the same realization as we want ourselves to have that you are our everything and then we can love each other in the confidence that all the needs of our beloved our partner our friend this acquaintance or this lady that needs help as she sees it we can rest assured that all her needs are in fact truly being met it's just that she mistakenly thinks that her happiness and welfare is in her husband being cured of cancer and in a sense it is because she hasn't fully entered into yet loving you with all her heart, soul, mind and strength may she have this blessed assurance blessed assurance love you Father love you for all that you are the love you have for all that you've created all things are yours Lord all that is created is yours and always will be love you for your great kindness love you Father love you thank you so much that you are our all in all thank you Dad so in the light of this Father I would ask two things for this lady not one firstly that she does indeed find your presence to be her blessed assurance come what may in the world and in this case with her husband and his cancer sorry not his cancer the cancer that at present he's suffering from and secondly I ask for her sake Lord given that she's not in this state yet that you heal her husband of the cancer in other words Father I ask that both things are met that she might know your all embracing love Father that she comes to the maturity of trusting you utterly and has the husband healed and I just ask Lord just ask for her sake if it please you Heavenly Father may this be so thank you Dad and however you answer this prayer Father just thank you so much for your overriding goodness at all times that is our security and nothing else will do Father only the love of you love you Father thank you Dad it's important then to um, remember that we're suggesting that the ideas we have that might be good with God in the circumstances that we find ourselves in we're not pressing God to actually carry out such we're just suggesting from, his po from our point of view but we want his complete decision not ours and that's because 
our contribution is simply that we trust utterly in our Heavenly Father. So we suggest things that come to us, but in a sense we're not even asking. We're just saying, this seems a good idea. And uh, he may answer it positively, he may not, and we see why, as time unfolds, that the way he has things is, is better. And we could imagine, in fact. So prayer is more an affirmation of our relationship with him, which is one of absolute trust. Um, a decision, almost, more than a decision, a finding of a state that we're in of confidence and assurance, rather than some pressing request. We simply suggest things that we fancy in the limited circumstances as we see it, whereas he is not limited and we would much rather have his decision. But we become part of the creative, part of the creating of the, of all things, in partnership with God, because we're children of God and we're being apprenticed to be like him. So he does respond it's not that he doesn't. He responds in an ideal way. Well, actually that encourages us. He's already, of course, has the welfare of both the person you're praying for and the circumstance outcome and, uh, and your own. He already has this care fully in mind. But it's a living relationship that we're in. And he delights in us influencing him because he uses it to teach us and guide us and bring us to maturity. He does respond. It's not that he just does his thing. His thing becomes in partnership with us. Because you see, we are friends. We're not servants or slaves, drones or machines. We are his fellowship, his family. He delights in creating with us. that he shares creating with someone, not just on his own. With this, dare I say, infinite company of life that he has created and brought into being. It's his fullness, you see. His fullness is in us, just as ours is in Him. I think that's the nearest I can get to it. Understanding of it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Dad. I'd just like to add how I feel here. Just thank you, Father, that such thoughts, uh, such words, coming to this recording uh, through me, but you know, that's what being a prophet is, you see. You find you've said something that's rather lovely, that you wouldn't have thought you'd have been able to come up with. And 
I fancy that it is because of our Heavenly Father speaking through us. Um, you don't know when it's going to happen. And perhaps in a sense it's always happening. But sometimes it's very vivid. And you just think, wow, where did that come from? And it's not a question, of course. It's an affirmation that you want with all your heart to trust that it's come from our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Dad.